Welcome back, everyone. We'd like to bring back Ethlon Medical. It trades under the NASDAQ under the symbol AEMD. Now, Ethlon is a medical therapeutic company focused on developing products to treat cancer and life-threatening infectious diseases. Now, recently, they announced the enrollment of the first two patients in the safety, feasibility, and dose finding study of Athlon's hemopurifier in patients with solid tumors not responding to anti-PD-1 antibodies. They also announced two Australian sites open for patient enrollment in the hemopurifier cancer trial. So happy to welcome Jim Franks and Stephen La Rosa. Welcome, gentlemen. You certainly have made a lot of progress since we last talked. Thank you, Anna. Yes, we've been busy. I think our last update was October 30th. And since then, we've uh, opened two sites in Australia with a third basically there. We've opened a site in India, and we've recruited um, our first two patients for the study. So we're very um, pleased with the progress. We we've been pushing hard, and it, it was nice to report some solid progress over the last five weeks. Fantastic. And Jim, you were also just named CEO of the company. So congratulations. And talk a little bit about your near-term focus for the company. Yes, uh, thanks, uh, Anna. We, um, the board named me interim CEO last November, about a year ago. And I am still the chief financial officer, CFO of the company as well. So I'm wearing two hats. And I uh, told the board when they asked me to take both roles that I would focus on reducing our expenses to lengthen our runway of cash that we have and to really focus on oncology and get our clinical trials moving forward. And uh, I think the board was pleased with the progress. They took off the interim title about a month ago and uh, I'm, uh, you have my pledge that I will continue to work moving the uh, clinical trials forward and to keep the control on expenses. Um, we just filed our quarterly report mid-November, uh, and um, we showed we reduced expenses quite a bit. It was a bit uh, obscured by the, uh, we I laid off some employees as part of the cost controls, and uh, we made some provisions, uh, accruals, to cover the um, um, severance periods on their contracts. So uh, that kind of, hid the uh, reduction of expenses, but we actually brought them down by $700,000, $800,000 quarter over quarter. So I was pleased about that. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm staying focused on that, letting Dr. La Rosa here, our chief medical officer, spearhead the um, oncology trials, but I'll let him talk about that in a bit. Fantastic, and what is your current cash position? At September 30, uh, we had approximately $6.9 million of cash. No debt of any sort on our balance sheet. And I like to keep it that way if I can. And do you plan to open more study sites? Steve, I'll let you yeah. cover that. So as Jim mentioned, we actually in Australia have two sites that are fully open in our, in our screening and recruiting patients. One's at Royal Adelaide Hospital in Adelaide and one's at um, Pindara Private Hospital in the Gold Coast. They are both screening patients. Adelaide has uh, enrolled two patients already. Uh, a third site at uh, University of Sydney, Royal North Shore Hospital has ethics board approval. And we're just waiting for their research governance approval. And they will also be able to start screening and enrolling sites. So we think with that cohort of three sites that we will be able to have uh, good screening and enrollment. Of course, we'll monitor the screening logs and enrollment activity and make adjustments if we need to. And then in India, we have Madanta Medicity Hospital, which is an investigator and a site that we've worked with for many years. And um, we're working with the oncology department there, and we think that they'll be able to enroll at that site. So we'll, we, we think we have a good cadre of sites, but we'll monitor the activity and make adjustments if we need to, to try to get timely uh, enrollment and data. Great. And when do you expect data from the trial? Well, so as I mentioned, we have two patients enrolled already. They've completed or passed through all the screening processes, and they're in the run-in period of the study. Um, if their uh, disease does not improve, they uh, would be potentially uh, exposed or treated to the hemopurifier early next year, early 2025. And we would expect uh, safety data in the first quarter. 
of next year with uh, data on removal of extracellular vesicles and T cells later in the year, probably third or fourth quarter. And how does the HEMA purifier work? If you could break that down for all of us. Yeah, so I'll show, I don't know how well that projects. This is the uh, Athlon HEMO purifier. It is a, a, a device that has a, a lumen with fibers and it's surrounded by our proprietary affinity resin outside the fibers. And the way it works is a patient is hooked up via a venovenous double lumen catheter. These are commonly used catheters for dialysis. Blood comes out of uh, one device through a pump into the lumen of the device where all the cellular elements stay within the lumen, but plasma and molecules less than 200 nanometers come out to this space outside the fibers where our proprietary affinity resin occurs. That's where the magic happens, if you will. That's, that's where exosomes or extracellular vesicles associated with um, tumor spread or life-threatening viruses come in contact with part of that resin, which is the GNA lectin, which binds exosomes and viruses and removes them. So as the plasma traverses the outside space, the exosomes and the viruses are bound and removed. The plasma re-enters the lumen of the device with the red cells, platelets, white cells, and other cellular elements, and then goes back to the patient so that nothing is lost. So it's really a, a combination of uh, plasma separation, size exclusion, and affinity binding with removal of life-threatening viruses and exosomes. And what type of approvals are required for such devices? Sabrina wants to know. Uh, so uh, typically for medical devices for which there is no predicate device, you have to undergo a, a PMA study, which is a pre-market uh, authorization study, which is essentially an efficacy and safety study. We're in the safety, feasibility, and dose finding part of the study, and we believe that the safety data and the data that we generate on extracellular vesicle removal and T-cell resuscitation, if you will, would provide information to inform the design of that subsequent PMA study, which is the equivalent in the drug world of a, of a, of a registration safety and efficacy study. And Carly asks, with regard to your COVID studies in India, are you moving to treat all similar viruses with this technology? So we, we have a, a trial in, in India in COVID. We have lots of in vitro data on a variety of envelope viruses. Envelope viruses are shrouded in a, in a coating of mannose, which is actually the target of our GNA. So we have a, a whole library of data for envelope viruses, some of, 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 of current interest, things like bird flu, uh, dengue virus. Um, we stand poised that it, when and if uh, uh, there is a uh, outbreak or pandemic with another envelope virus that we'll be poised to check test for binding in vitro and then deploy if need be in a, in a, in a clinical trial with an envelope virus. So uh, we're not just for COVID, it's really envelope viruses with this mannose on the surface should be amenable to removal with our device. Great. And um, so, so Frank, if I may, on a, uh, um, so the product was originally developed for virology uh, and we do stand poised to act as a countermeasure to these types of horrible viruses that Steve mentioned. But again, our main focus is oncology. We're, we're really, I'm being very sim, uh, simple minded and singularly focused on oncology. So we're ready, we're standing by, we'll have some cartridges ready if something crops up here or elsewhere. But again, we're, we're, we're trying to really stay focused. And uh, Frank asks, is there anything like your hemo purifier in the market already? What's the closest competition? Uh, so there are a, a variety of extra uh, corporeal devices that are in development. Uh, the uh, only device that's also investigational that focuses on viruses per se is probably the, the CRF uh, device from Xthera. Um, we're not aware of any company that is focusing on extracellular vesicle removal. We believe we're the only one. And last question for you guys, Osvaldo asks, is it right that your market cap is equal to cash on hand? 
And you have zero debt, is that correct? It's correct, we have zero debt. And I'm not sure where we close today, but it, it, we are roughly equal. Our market cap is roughly equal to cash. And um, I, not supposed to say what I think about that, <laughs> but uh, I, I think the company has much, you know, we should have much more value than that. That's just my okay, opinion. Perfect. Well, well, thank you guys so much for this update. We look forward to seeing you in the new year. Super. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thanks for everybody's attention to Athlon Medical. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll be right back.